Okay, welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use slicers and charts to create an athlete dashboard to display multiple KPIs. So as you can see here, I have two menus. I have one that allows me to select the athlete and another that allows me to select the date. And as I select through these different options, I can select multiple different dates and I can see the, the associated KPI charts change. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back with um, this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials and um, before we get started, just want to remind you that if the channel is helping you out, please smash that like button and make sure you subscribe and like all the videos and all that good stuff because that's really helping me out. Um, and then if you want to purchase any of the sheets from Strength Coach Tutorials, there is a link in the description below. Okay, so with that out of the way, as promised, let's get to today's video. Um, we are starting out with a sheet with some data on it and to anyone that's kind of done some strength coaching the data is going to look sort of funky but it is just some fake data so that we can play around with it for our sheet. So what we have here is an athlete name, um, a date which is actually formatted as a number right now so we'll change that and then we have um, bench weight and then bench reps completed and we are converting that into a 1RM and then a squat weight and a squat reps completed and we are converting that into a 1RM. So what I wanna be able to do is like in the intro, I wanna have a slicer that allows me to select the athlete name and then I wanna be able to show their bench results and their squat results and really we could do this with any um, KPIs that we might be tracking so it'll work the same way but it ends up being a really powerful little trick so the first thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna turn it into a table and the reason for that is it just gives us more options for references and we can add a slicer to it to chop down the data so I'm gonna take this whole data set and like we've done in a lot of different videos I'm gonna click format as table and I'm gonna select my table has headers and hit OK. So when you format something as a table, um, what it allows you to do is use table references, but also you get these arrow boxes on the top of your um, table. And these are actually filters. So if I were to click on one of these, I could select athlete one, and I'm gonna turn off athlete two. So I'm only selected on athlete one. And when I click OK, it's just going to show me athlete one's data. So this can be super powerful if you just want to quickly pull up some data um, from a specific athlete or client or kind of whatever the case may be. Now, the problem with that is that we need to make sure that everything is spelled the same and formatted correctly. So I'm going to show you a trick for that after. But first, let's clean up this ugly date. So the first thing um, we're going to do to clean up this date is it's formatted as a number. And I'm just gonna select the whole column here by going up to the top and it'll give me a little black down arrow. And I can click that to select the whole column. And I'll go up to where it says general. Um, sometimes that'll say number, but it's basically your number format tab. And I'm gonna click there, go all the way down to more number formats. And I'm gonna select custom. And the way that I like to format mine is um, year, month, date. So I'm gonna type in YYYY dash MM dash DD and hit OK, and that's gonna format everything as year, month, date. And then the last thing I wanna to do to clean up this table a little bit is I'm actually gonna make everything sort of center um, or centered. So if I go up to the top left of the table and click there, it's gonna select all of the values, and then I can click um, the center option to kind of center everything. So now our table looks pretty good, and I'm gonna show you a little trick to add um, a feature that is going to highlight any names that might be spelled incorrectly from a master list or a, say an athlete roster or team roster or something like that. So the first trick we need to do to do that is we're going to rename our table so you can just click anywhere on the table and then go up to where it says table design and in the far left hand corner it's going to give you an option to rename your table and I'm going to call it TBL data and my naming structure is always TBL if it's a table and then whatever that table is containing. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create a table with the athlete roster. So I can just select a couple cells here. I'm gonna hit Control C and I'll paste that over here 
and I'll double click on the column to make it bigger. I'll actually make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm gonna format this as a table in the same way that we just did and my table has headers. And I'm gonna put my athlete roster in here. So I'll have athlete one and athlete two. And I'm gonna name this um, TBL roster. Let's make the TBL capital. Oh, it's telling me that I already have a TBL roster. So I'm gonna change that quickly. And this is just the one from the intro. So I'll just change that quickly and I'll, I'll turn this into TBL roster and hit okay. Okay, so now we have a TBL roster and a TBL data. So what I need to do is I need to check in this first row to see if the name in athlete name matches a name in roster. And then I just wanna return um, a true value if it does and a false value if it doesn't. So I'm gonna use a formula here and then I'm gonna show you what I'll do with the formula after. So I'm gonna put equals is error and that's gonna check whether a value is an error and return either a true or false. It's a true if it's an error or it's a false if it's not an error. And then I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna use the match function. And what the match function is gonna allow me to do is match to see if the function in, or if the value in the cell is equal to one of the ones in the table. So I'm gonna type in match and then open that bracket up and it's gonna ask me for some stuff. So first thing it's gonna ask me for is the lookup value. And in this case, it's stored in B3. And then I'm gonna hit comma and then it's gonna ask me for the lookup array. And for the array, what I want is actually um, this whole table or this whole column out of the table. So what I can do for that is I'm gonna use the indirect function. I'm gonna type indirect and then open that up. And I'm gonna select table roster athlete name. And I know when I'm using indirect that I need to put these in brackets and then I'm going to close that off and then it's gonna ask me what kind of match that I want and I'm gonna select zero for exact match and then I'm just gonna close off these brackets. And when I hit enter, what you'll notice is I'm gonna get a value of false and it is false because it is not an error and that means that it does match. And the way that we can check this is if I was to change the name in the athlete roster to just athlete, you're gonna see that it's true. Now it match or now it um, does not match, okay? And so let's put that back to athlete one. And for example, if I was to type the name in wrong here and I was to put John, then it's gonna give me a value of true as well. And it's gonna work because we left the um, reference open. If I drag this down, it'll work for kind of all of the different cells. So I'll put that back. So we're gonna copy this formula and I'm gonna hit Control C and then I'm going to select the entire column and go to conditional formatting and then put new rule. And I'm gonna use a formula to determine the rule and right in there, I'm gonna paste that formula. So it's the exact same formula that we just came up with and the format that I want is I'm gonna make it a light red color if it doesn't match. So I'll select red and then go to more colors and custom. Um, no, actually, we'll go to fill effects. Nope, sorry. We'll go to custom and we're just gonna change the color of red a little bit. We'll just make it a little bit lighter and there's a, a sliding dial here on the side. Hit okay and then hit okay and you'll notice it didn't really do anything. But if we were to spell one of these names wrong, it's gonna to start to highlight them in red if they don't match our roster, which can be super powerful to just help you recognize any mistakes that you might have had in your sheet. So I'll just put those back um, and then we don't really need this formula here. So I'm just gonna hide it, I'll make it kind of white. Um, font there. So that's trick number one is how to highlight any um, unmatched or uh, unmatched athletes in your roster. And now trick number two is we're going to use um, a slicer to kind of create some graphs here. So I'm going to highlight the athlete names 
the date and I'm just holding control while I do this and we're gonna do the bench press one first and I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to go to recommended charts and it's gonna want me to put in a line chart but I'm gonna go to all charts and I'm gonna select a line with markers just I think that looks a little bit better and hit OK. So it's made everything look a little bit funky, but I'm gonna call this the bench press chart. And you can see we have our chart now, and I'm gonna select um, my series. So I'm gonna select data. And instead of, so what it's done is it's lumped all of athlete one and the date together. So I'm just gonna edit that and select just the date, hit OK. And then the values, edit. I'll select just the bench press RMs and hit OK. Oh, I selected the, I selected there, hit OK. So you can see we have our chart now. Oh, that looks weird, hold on one sec. Yeah, it selected the whole thing, so I'll hit OK there. Okay, so now we have our chart. So what we wanna be able to do is select a box and then select which athlete we actually wanna look at. So if I just click anywhere on the chart and go to table design, I can go to insert slicer and it's gonna ask me what I wanna slice by. I'm gonna select athlete name and hit okay. And then I'm gonna put this somewhere over here. Actually, this is gonna look really weird because when we use the slicer, it's gonna hide some cells. So let's move this down a little bit and you'll see why in a second. So all we've done is kind of move it down, but now I should be able to select athlete one or athlete two, and it's going to change the data depending on which athlete we select. And then if we want to clear that, we just hit the clear in the top left corner here, and we're all good. So I'm going to insert one other slicer. And for this one, I want to use the date and hit OK. So it's gonna give me all of the dates. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy this chart, Control C, Control V. So we should, nope, didn't copy, Control V. There we go, we have a copy of the chart. I'm gonna call this one Squat. And when I right click on the chart, I'm gonna to go to Select Data. And instead of the bench press data, I'm gonna hit Edit and I'm gonna select the squat RM data. And hit okay, because everything else on the chart will be the same. So now what you'll see is I'll be able to select the athlete and we'll be able to see either their squat or their bench press data. So now all I need to do is I'm gonna take these and arrange them on a different sheet. So I'm gonna select all four of them holding control, right click and I'm gonna cut them and then I'm gonna to go to my visualization sheet and paste them, control V, and we'll paste them back in, and I'll paste the two, the data up here, and then that down here, and maybe the squats along the bottom, and we make it a little bit longer, maybe a little bit narrower, and then maybe we put the bench press up here in the corner. And there you have it. So now we can select either athlete, and we can select a handful of dates that we wanna look at, and we have a simple kind of data visualization dashboard type deal that we can look at different KPIs with our athletes. And really, if we wanted to add any more um, KPIs, we could just keep adding different columns. And as long as they happen on the same date, we'd be able to kind of keep going with that kind of indefinitely. So we could have um, sprint times or power clean numbers or any number of things and we'd be able to control it all from um, the chart here, and it would look quite good actually. So that's just a quick tip um, on how to create a data visualization using some slicers and some charts. It was pretty quick. Um, just a quick reminder that if you wanna follow me on social media, you can find me at DSM Strength. And um, if you could share this video to somebody else, that, that really helps me out, and I'm, and I'm looking forward to kind of catching up with you in the next video. So thank you.